buddy. Coming out to a tray tonight. Get a good gospel message in before you go in and see Lecrae. Hallelujah. Chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? For what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. The Word of God calls us to be separate from the world. The Word of God, the Word of God calls us to not be unequally yoked together with those that are unbelievers. What does it mean to be yoked together? That means you're in agreement with. That means you're walking together. But the Word of God tells us that we have to choose to stay whom we're going to serve. Either we're going to serve the God of this world, or we're going to serve the Most High God, the Father, the Eternal One. The Word of God calls, calls us to be separate from the world. 1 John 2, 5-17. Invited to the breakfast club. You're not going to be invited to sway in the morning. You're not going to be invited. 
it to the major record labels in the world and you're speaking truth in love. And what is the truth? The word of God is the truth. Jesus said, sanctify them to thy truth. Thy word is true. The word of God is true. How can I help No, 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 no. I don't need to interpret. 
see from there. That's the ultimate goal is deception of women in the last day. I 
you back to preach. What's your name? Phil. Uh, uh, Phil. Uh, I just pray, man, that you know the word bless you. Always the word of God. That's what we preach. And uh, you know, I really pray you are unashamed because honestly, I don't believe the phrase. Uh, and actually, I'll just get, that's a great segue right now. God bless. Now, my friend Phil has a shirt on, and it says unashamed. And I know that's what Lecrae and his group 116, they tout. They tout that they're unashamed. 116, Romans 116, it means that we're unashamed. But if Lecrae was so unashamed, why would he go to barely mentioning the name of Jesus Christ in his music anymore? Why doesn't Lecrae hardly ever mention the name of Christ anymore in his music? Well, the camera's for several reasons. One, for training purposes. Two, because we've been assaulted before. Three, we've been lied on before by Christians and non-believers or professing Christians. So, so anyways, Lecrae boasts about being unashamed. But if Lecrae was really unashamed, he would have no problem mentioning the name of Christ in his music. Now many people will say, hey, he doesn't have to say Jesus in every song. Well, realistically, you should, because music was created to worship God. That's what music was created for. That's why God created music in heaven. He created it to worship Him. He didn't create it to worship yourself. He didn't create it to talk about yourself and boast about yourself, but to worship Him and Him alone. That's what music was created for. So when he says he's unashamed, the Word of God says we judge a tree by its fruit. We don't go by what somebody says. We go by their walk. We go by their actions. And if their fruit doesn't line up with the tree, well, the Word of God says that that tree is going to be hewn down. If a tree bears bad fruit, it's going to be hewn down and cast in the fire. That's what the Word of God says. So he says he's unashamed. We'll just read Romans 1 16. We'll read Romans 1 16 and see if he's really unashamed. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But what does Jesus have to say about those that are that those that are ashamed of him? What does Jesus have to say about that? Jesus says, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he shall come in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. So Jesus says that he will be ashamed of those that are ashamed of him. <laughs> God bless you, young man. It's an index card. So Jesus says that he's ashamed of those that are ashamed of him. So when we're on the world stage, when we actually have the opportunity to go before the whole entire world and proclaim the gospel, whether it's at the Grammys, whether it's at Sway in the morning, whether it's on the Breakfast Club, or any other kind of worldly show or worldly venue or worldly entertainment, and we don't proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, and we don't proclaim it loudly, no matter what kind of attack we're going to face, no matter what kind of attack we're going to face, that means that we're ashamed. We're ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the book of First Peter, Listen, I respect your right to be out here and, and preach what you need to preach. That's right. I just can't allow you to do it in the street. Okay, I'll just go on the sidewalk. Okay. Well, not in the sidewalk, because that'll be in the street. No, actually, what I'm not. No one's walking right there. I, I remember you from before, and, and we were fine right here last time. Sir. Sir. 
Yes, sir. I'm going to talk to you. I'm trying to work with you. You're not trying to work with me. You're trying to tell me I can't. That's a public sidewalk. I know. And you can't set up there. And yes, I can. No, I'm not feeding anybody. Well, I'm here's not what I, anybody. Here's what I'm doing. I'm just advising you what the, what the law is. If you choose to disobey it, I'm trying to give you a solution. Are you Christian? I'm trying to give you Are a solution. Are you Christian? Sir. Are you Christian? Whether I am or not is irrelevant. No, it's not irrelevant because the word of God says if you follow the law on your brother, yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't disobey God, sir. This okay, is a sir. public sidewalk. No, this is a public sidewalk. I'm just saying, if, if you choose to set up there, that's a public you sidewalk. You in violation of city ordinance. Show it to me. What, what city ordinance? What city ordinance? What city ordinance? I'm trying to give you a city ordinance. But you don't even let me get a word in. Because you're trying to tell me, you're trying to tell me I can't stand on a public. That's a public sidewalk. It's public. You know what that, you know what that means? That means the tax dollars, the people that pay their taxes pay for that sidewalk. You know we have to know. Do you know what the law is? You know that, that you cannot impede the First Amendment. No, but you can't. can't. The sidewalk. I'm not impeding the sidewalk. There's nobody walking through here. If you do, if you if you if you impede the if you impede the First Amendment, then I will contact my lawyer. Then I will contact my lawyer. Okay. So I'm asking you to move from there. That's this is a public sidewalk. Are you refusing to do This is a public sidewalk. I'm asking you to move from the sidewalk. I'm asking you, are you are you trying to imp impede on my First Amendment rights? No, I'm not. Actually, actually uh, you are. Because this is a first, okay, this we, is a public we, we sidewalk. Can go through this back and forth. I'm trying to give you. La la hey, la I remember you from last time. And last time you were here, last time you were here, yes, you were. From the Kirk Franklin I concert. You here. I remember you, you from the where Kirk I told Franklin you you concert. could set up at. Where? I told you you could set up right up there. Okay. And that's what I'm trying to do now. But you want to argue about it. So what I'm telling you is, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm telling you what the city ordinance is. If you choose to disobey it, then that's that's fine. That's on you. That's the choice I you want make. To show me the order. Right. Show I'm me the order. Showing you a order. Exactly. Exactly. Hey. You have to have proof okay. of it. Are you trying? You're trying. You're trying to. You're trying to put a Are law. Are you refusing on me. to move? You're trying to put a law. I mean, you can't even prove it. Are you refusing to move? You can't prove it. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move up there. Okay, but well, that's all I'm asking. But next time, if you want, if you, if you, no, no, there is a next time. Okay. If you want to try to enforce a law, you need to okay. prove the law. Well, I just need you to move. You can't just make up laws out of thin air. Make up anything. Yes, you are. You have no proof for your ordinance. Then why are you moving? Why? Because you know what? I don't want to have to take you to court. That's why. I don't want to have to make you look like a fool. That's why. Now I do that on my own. Yeah, I'm sure you do. And I pray you repent. Especially if you're a professing Christian. You need to repent, sir. You really need to repent, officer. Well, thank you for not doing your job and upholding the First Amendment. And lying on people. It's all right. Yeah, I have a right to. I have a First Amendment right. Remember when I was preaching? Remember when I was preaching at the uh, Shaky Beats concert? You came right by me. Remember that? When we were preaching there? And and we preach out here every day. We preach out here at concerts. So that's all right. And the enemy always has his attacks. To the word of God, though, while being rudely interrupted. And the word of God says in 1 Peter 4 16, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Glory to God that we actually have the First Amendment in this country. Glory to God for that amendment to come out in the open square and preach the gospel. Because the word of God says, the word of God says in Mark 16, go ye off into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It says to go off into the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say sit in your little building and wait for people to come to you. It says go out to where the people are and you preach the gospel unto them. Hallelujah. The word of God. First John, hallelujah. Abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed for him at his coming. We should not have any shame in the name of Jesus Christ, and especially at his coming. We should be unashamed. So that means we're on the world's platforms. We should proclaim the name of Jesus Christ loudly. And we should not care about our record contracts. We should not care about what the world is going to say about us. Oh, 
know the word of God. They need to hear the word of God. They don't need to hear your worldly music, young man. They need to hear the word of God. So I call on my angels, and they say, Don't doubt it, don't doubt it. It's going to be in my veins. I know it, I know it. First Peter, hallelujah, 316. I fight it, I fight it, I will dress. Having a good conscience. Now, whereas they speak evil to you, as a people to they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. That's a lie from 
from the pit of hell. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The word of God says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that, God, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that were dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, who baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. When you're born again, there's a newness of life. You're not going to want to continue in the things that keep you in bondage. You're going to have a change of mind and a change of heart that will lead to a change of action, sir. That's called repentance. And you have no fruit meat for repentance. There's no fruit meat for repentance there, young man. false 
convert for several years. I was a false convert. I believed I was born again. And that I wanted to go back out in the world and fornicate. I wanted to go back out in the world and do drugs. I wanted to go back out in the world and sell drugs. I wanted to go back out in the world and get drunk and get high and smoke cigarettes and lust and have pride and hatred in my heart. And guess what? I was a false convert. I was a false convert. Because the word of God says, shall we continue with sin that grace may abound? God forbid. We are not going to continue off in sin. We're not. Because when the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you, it purges out that old leaven. It purges out that old man out of you. That's the gift. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that is a gift from God. And we're going to get to that. Word of God says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart. You've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Hallelujah. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. And I speak after the manner of men. Here we go again. Because of the infirmity of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity. Thank you. God bless you, brother. Thank you. For ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity. And unto iniquity. Even so now yield your members servants to, unright to righteousness, unto holiness. And holiness doesn't necessarily mean that you're just going to be completely, that you're not going to have, that you're not going to stumble across the way and, and you might slip up and say a cuss word. Or you might slip up and get angry. But it does mean you're no longer going to live a sinful lifestyle. That, is, that, that means you're no longer going to enjoy your sin. That means a homosexual will no longer be a homosexual when they're born again. They're going to hate homosexuality. They're going to hate fornicating with the same sex. They're going to hate uh, 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 lusting after another man or a woman lusting after another woman. They're going to hate that. There's no, there's no sodomites in heaven. I'm sorry, there's not. There's no drunkards in heaven. The Word of God says, Know ye not. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Know ye not. But be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind. That's referring to homosexual, sodomite is the actual biblical word for that. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. So Paul is saying that some of these people, they were once adulterers. They were once sodomites. They were once fornicators. They were once adulterers. They were once thieves. They were once that. And they got born again and they got delivered from that. So when you're born again, you're going to be delivered from those sins that keep you in bondage. That's the work of Christ on the cross. That's what the cross did. He, our sins were nailed on that cross. And he took them all to hell and left them there so we no longer have to live dead in our sins. That means as a born-again Christian, you're not going to want to keep getting tattoos. You're not. somebody. That's the finished work of Christ on the cross. So when you say that you're going to always be a sinner and you're going to die in your sin, you make the cross, cross of Christ in none effect. You're lying. That is the enemy working there. I pray for that young man who went inside there who was smoking and he was trying to tell us that we're going to all die as sinners. No, we're not. No, we're not. Did Paul die as a sinner? Did Peter die as a sinner? Did John die as a sinner? Did John the Baptist die as a sinner? Did Christ die as a sinner? No, he was sinless. No, none of these men died as sinners. They were martyrs. They were saints. 
So we're not going to live, and we're not going to continue to live dead in our sin when we're born again, friends. We're not. We're not. And that's unfortunately the weak kind of gospel that's preached today in this country. You know, come as you are and stay as you are. That's the gospel that's preached in this world today. Come as you are and stay as you are. Let me finish Romans 6, though. This, this, this needs to be read. Hallelujah. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Wow. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. And the end everlasting life. Everlasting life. There is no sin in heaven. There's no sin in heaven. Sin cannot stand before God. So we're not going to die as sinners. We're going to die as born-again, Bible-believing Christians. Saints. Saints of the Most High. That is how we're going to die. Last verse of Romans 6. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. That is the payment. The payment for your sinning is death. If you love your sin and you want to continue to live in your sin, you're going to die in your sin and you're going to go to hell. That's, that's the truth of the matter. That's the truth of the matter. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is the gift of God. That is the gift of God. It's eternal life. And it can only be found in putting your faith and trust completely in Jesus. That's it. That is it. It can only be found in Jesus and Jesus alone. Hey, I work hard for my money. You can, go, you can go stand in another corner. I'm sure there's other events going on. But people need to hear the gospel. Even so-called professing Christians need to hear the gospel. Because they don't get it. They don't get the gospel. They don't get it around here. They don't get it in Atlanta. This is lukewarm Atlanta. They don't get the gospel in this city. Because if they did, you wouldn't see a billboard on, uh, what is that, on 285. You wouldn't see a billboard on 285 talking about 20 million unreported cases of HIV. That's what sin produces. That's what sin produces. That's not, that's not glorifying God at all. That's not a city. That's not a city. That's not a people where they put their faith and trust in God. No, that's a city where they put their trust and faith in the God of this world, Satan. That's a city who would rather serve the lust of their flesh and the lust of their eyes and the pride of life. That's what this city is. And this city needs to repent. An artist like Lecrae, he has a platform to call people to repentance and he doesn't. No, he'd rather yoke up with the world. He'd rather be unequally yoked with the world. He would rather be unequally yoked with Ty Dallas High. He'd rather be unequally yoked with E-40. He'd rather be unequally yoked with Sway in the Morning. He'd rather be unequally yoked with Columbia Records, who also has such artists like Beyonce and other trash that promotes trash. Because that's what Beyonce promotes. She is nothing but a Jezebel. You can actually find her. The Bible law actually writes about her in Proverbs 7. The Proverbs 7 strange woman. The Proverbs 7 harlot. That's where you can find this at. You can find it in the Word of God. Because when you actually start studying and reading the Word of God and applying it to the life that we live in, you can see all these things taking place before you. The Word of God took this stage. You can hear worldly music all day. You can hear worldly music down at the down on the Ferris wheel. Like every show. He, 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 last time when I was last time when I was at Shaky, let me finish. Last time when I was at Shaky Beats, last time when I was at Shaky Beats, he came right by me and started drawing on me. Repent, 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 repent,
Exactly. You're a mocker. You don't have the Holy Spirit and you don't have God in you. You need to repent and be born again. You need that. You need to repent and be born again, sir. You need to hear the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ, he came in this world 2,000 years ago to die for sinners like that man. He died for you, sir, and he's calling you to repentance. He died for your sins, so you no longer have to live in them. But you choose to mock the preacher of the gospel. That's what you choose to do. We go to all sorts of shows, sir. We go to football games. We go to Falcons games. We go to football, uh, Alabama games. You don't even know what a hypocrite is. <laughs> okay. Says the sinner, right? Says the lost guy. Says the lost guy. This guy wants to tell us where to preach at? Yeah, we preached at death metal concerts. And? We preached out at Tomorrow World. And? We preached at the Falcons games, the Alabama games. We're going to be at Jay-Z and Lady Gaga. And? We were at Young Jeezy at the, uh, the streets. 2K17 concert, whatever. We were out there. And? What's your point, sir? God didn't call me to go to 2 Chains. God called me to come and speak at Lecrae, though, because these people need to hear about Lecrae. They need to hear about Jesus, because he does not preach the real Jesus. He doesn't. If Lecrae preached the real Jesus, he wouldn't be loved by the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in Lecrae. I'm sorry, but it's not. Because if the love of, if the love of the Father was in Lecrae, he would have no problem saying the name of Jesus. He would have no problem preaching the gospel on the world stage. He has the opportunity to preach the gospel on the world stage, and he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. No, he lets the he lets the interviewers talk to him about threesomes. He lets interviewers talk to him about threesomes and he laughs about it. And he says, oh, read my book, you'll find out about it in there. Is that a man of God? No, it's not. A man of God is not, he's gonna, a man of God is going to rebuke that. A man of God is going to say, don't you disrespect me like that. Don't you ask me a filthy question like that. No, he laughs about it and jokes about it. That's what Lecrae does. Yes, he is false. And it just take, it takes somebody with enough boldness and courage to call them out. The Word of God tells us to mark them and avoid them, which cause divisions and contrary to the doctrine which he had received. And that's what he does. He preaches a false Jesus. The Galatians 1, 6 through 9, Jesus. People are dying and going to hell, and we want to sit here and, and play, play uh, paddy whack, uh, whatever it's called, with the world. We want to go on Swain in the morning in the breakfast club and, and, and play tic-tac-toe with these people. We want to play patty cake with them. But people are dying and going to hell. You have an opportunity to preach the gospel of Christ, do it. But if not, then quit claiming to even be a Christian. Quit claim in the name of Christ if you're not going to actually preach the gospel, Lecrae. <laughs> this guy wants to tempt me to say, come out to two chains. I don't care about two chains. He's lost. I pray he gets born again. I pray two chains is born again. I marvel that you are soon that you are so soon removed from him that called you into grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So when Leclerc preaches another gospel, when he preaches that false gospel, let him be accursed. My hopes and prayers are that, is that Lecrae repents and gets born again. That's my hopes and prayers for Lecrae. Because he has the stage. He has the stage to preach the true unadulterated gospel and he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. Why is that? Why, why won't Lecrae preach the true unadulterated gospel? He had the perfect opportunity to on Sway. He had the perfect opportunity to on the Breakfast Club. He had the perfect opportunity to at the Grammys. He has the perfect opportunity to being signed.
signed to Columbia Records, but he doesn't take advantage of it. No, he doesn't. Why? Because he's of the world. And if you're of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. The love of the Father is not in you. I pray Lecrae repents. I pray Lecrae repents. I pray in Jesus' name Lecrae gets born again. I pray he, he actually lives up to being unashamed. He, he touts it. Everyone's wearing shirts saying you're unashamed. It takes more than a shirt to say you're unashamed. It's the fruit of your daily life. It's the fruit of your daily life. Are you unashamed? Are you, are you so unashamed that you would go on a street corner and preach the gospel? No. I don't see anybody else doing it out here in Atlanta. There ain't many, there ain't many out here going out in the streets preaching the gospel in Atlanta. No, there isn't. But everyone wants to say they're unashamed. We got t-shirts on saying we're unashamed. Well, you can wear a t-shirt all day. That doesn't mean you're unashamed. It's the fruit of your daily life that shows you're unashamed. If Lecrae is unashamed, he would have no problem preaching the gospel when he's on Sway in the morning or when he's on the breakfast club. Lecrae is a regular guest on Sway in the morning. I remember the first time I even heard of Lecrae. It was on a worldly rap station. It was on a worldly rap station. That was the first time I ever heard of Lecrae. And I didn't even know he was a Christian. I had no clue Lecrae was a Christian, or a professing Christian, I should say. I had no clue. So then I started listening to his music, just to see what he was talking about, and right away, I seen the leaven. I still listened to it. But as time went on, as time went on, Kurt Lecrae was less and less and less naming the name of Christ. And now that fruit has manifested and it's grown, and this is what you see out of it now today. This is what you see today. You see somebody who is ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And no one's willing to come out here and speak the truth in boldness. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to take the heat. Nobody wants to take the ridicule. Nobody wants. To, and she shakes her head. She doesn't even know the truth. Lecrae is yoked up with the world, and she shakes her head. I mean, you're coming to a Lecrae concert, and you're getting you're getting searched. I mean, what is this? I mean, <laughs> that's no different than the world. You go into the world venues, and you're being searched. This is supposed to be a Christian concert, and we're being searched. I mean, really? What are people smuggling drugs in here? Are people bringing guns inside of a Lecrae concert? I mean, really? <laughs> I mean, this is hilarious to me. But, you know, this is the word of God says, my people love to have it so. They love to have it so. I really pray, I really pray with Craig this morning again. That's my hopes and prayers for him. That is my hopes and prayers for the pray. Is that the false gospel that he comes with, that the Lord shut his mouth. The Lord shut his mouth and give him the true gospel. That he repent. That he asked God to have mercy upon him. He asked God to have mercy upon him. Because there's many, many scriptures you don't hear people preaching about. You don't, you don't hear many people preaching about the false teachers in the world. You don't hear many people preaching about the deception that's coming upon the world that's already here. You don't hear many people preaching about that. But Jesus said in the last days, deception was going to be the number one earmark. Deception. Satan is going to use whatever means possible to deceive people. That means he's going to use so-called Christian people, professing Christians to deceive people. He's going to use the hill songs of the world. He's going to use the Lecrae's of the world. He's going to use the Andy Minios of the world. He's going to use the Joel Osteen's of the world and the Cruffalo Dollars of the world. He's going to use these kind of people because this is the judgment on America and this is the judgment on God's people. The Word of God says that judgment will begin in the house of God first. That judgment is going to begin in the house of God and you're seeing that judgment taking place with people like Lecrae. You're seeing that judgment take place with people like Bill Song. With people like Andy Minio. That's why people have to come out here and call them to repentance. They have to be called to repentance because they think they're above it. Lecrae, he acts.
acts like he's above reproof. Lecrae acts like he's above rebuke. Anytime somebody reproves him or rebukes him, he just he just uh, sh- pushes it aside in a mocking, condescending kind of way. And then you'll and then just like most, he'll say, "Oh, they're Pharisees, or oh, they're legalists," and not even know what those words mean, not even accurately defining those words. This is what people like Lecrae and his help do. And this is why somebody needs to come out here and call Lecrae to repentance today. And I pray somebody in there lets Lecrae know that we're out here. I'll speak to Lecrae personally, face to face, if he's open for that. I mean, if he's open for that, I would, I would gladly do that. I would have no problem doing that. I would have no problem giving Lecrae the true gospel. No problem with that whatsoever. God bless you. And I know many think, many will think, oh, well, who are you to judge? Who are you to judge? You know, we, we get this a lot when we come out and preach. No, judge not. Judge not. Judge not. But the Word of God says that we are called to judge. We're called to judge righteous judgment. We're not called to judge hypocritically or condemningly. Because those that, those that are in unbelief, they're already condemned. But those that like to judge hypocritically, those are those that the Word of God would also refer to as the Pharisees. Those that are actually living in that sin and they're telling somebody else not to do that sin. Those that wear an outward appearance of being righteous, but inwardly they're they're ravening wolves. Inwardly they're they're dead men's bones, they're dead men's bones and whited sepulchers, it says in the word of God. So we are called to judge. We are called to judge. We are called to make righteous judgment. We are called to uh, we're, we're called to judge our brethren, it says in the word of God, hallelujah. We're to judge one another. It's because it's because we live in this false gospel. You can't judge anybody anymore. That's why that's why churches in America are going to hell in a handbasket. That's why you see all types of wicked stuff in these churches. That's why you see pastors cheating on their wives, fornicating, adultery. You see people like Eddie Long molesting children, molesting boys. That's why you see this type of stuff, because nobody wants to judge anymore. That's why you have sodomites. You have sodomites as worship leaders in in churches. You have sodomites running rampant in all these churches. Dewey Smith's church. Andy Stanley's churches. That's why you have sodomites just running rampant, because nobody wants to judge anymore. Nobody wants to call out sin. Everyone's like, well, we just go along to get along. But that's not what we're called to do. The Word of God tells us that we're to judge them within. That means we're to judge those that are in the body of Christ. Those that call themselves Christians, we are to judge. There is no Bible scripture that tells us we cannot judge at all. That's unbiblical. The Word of God says a spiritual man, he judges everything. And is judged of by no man. The Word of God also says... That we're going to judge angels. Us Christians, us, us saints of God, we will judge angels. So how much more the things that pertain to this life? It's because there is no judgment anymore. There's a lack of judgment. And that's why most churches in this nation are lukewarm. That's why most churches, God's, Jesus is going to spew out of his mouth. He's going to say, because, because you're neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm, I will spew thee out my mouth. That's what Jesus is going to do. He's calling, he's calling for churches that truly are unashamed. He's calling for people who truly wants to live the gospel out in their day-to-day life. Who has no problem going out and preaching the word of God. That's what Jesus is looking for. That's what God is calling his people to do. So if you're unashamed, prove it. Let your actions prove it. Not a t-shirt, not a song, not a tattoo, not a sticker, but your actions. Let your actions speak louder than your words. This 
the name of this tour is called All Things Work Together. Why stop there though? Read the rest of the scripture. All things work together for good to them that love God. To them that love God. All things work together to them that love God. If you don't love God, all things are not going to work together. You have to love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. You have to love God. That is the only thing that all things will work together. I really pray that Lecrae actually expounds on that message. All things work together to them that love God. All things don't work together. All things do not work together for those that don't love God. The word of God says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. If you're not in submission to God, the devil doesn't have to flee from you. You're not going to be able to resist him. It all goes back to God. Worship music is to worship God, not to worship the person on the stage. And unfortunately, that's that's what we see. I mean, we see we see so many people wearing Lecrae shirts, wearing 116 shirts, wearing Andy Minio shirts, wearing God is dope shirts. First and foremost, God is not dope. That's 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 vanity right there. That's taking the Lord's name in vain in essence. God is not dope. God is gracious. God is merciful. God is sovereign. God is love. God is also wrath. He's also judgment. But God is not dope. God is not cool. Jesus is not your homeboy. He's the most, God is the most high. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. He is the first and the last. He, he is that rock. He is that holy one. He is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. But he's not dope. He's not your own boy. I got him. These are, the, these are the kind of things that we have to, I mean, it, 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 seemed, it seems petty, but you reduce God down when you use that kind of language. You're, you reduce God down to a fleshly, carnal way of looking at God. And we should have more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We should have more reverence towards our Creator. We should have more respect towards our Creator. He's holy. He's not dope. I mean, come on, people. But I digress. So all things work together for good to them that love God. And that is the greatest commandment. The greatest commandment is to love God with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is the greatest commandment. And until we, until we can accomplish that commandment, we can never love our neighbor, which is the second commandment. We have to love God with all of our whole mind, with all our whole mind, soul, strength. And until we do, until we do, we're just going to be fleshly. We're going to be carnal, and we're going to keep doing our own thing. We're going to keep operating according to our will, according to the lust of our flesh, friends. Call upon the Lord today, please. You don't need Lecrae to draw near to God. You need the Word of God. The Word of God says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith doesn't come by the hearing of Lecrae. It comes by the hearing of the Word of God. It comes by the preaching of the Holy Scriptures. Because God's Word never returns void. His Word will not return void. But the words of Lecrae, those will return void. He's a mere man. He's a mere man. The word of God says, Cursed is the man who trusts in a man and make his flesh his arm and his heart departed from the Lord. Uh, Cursed is the man who trusts in man. We should not put our trust in Lecrae. We need to hear the words of Scripture. We need to hear the Holy Bible. These are the words that have eternal life to them. It's the word of God that has eternal life. Not the words of Lecrae, friends. His words do not produce eternal life. I don't even see Lecrae pointing people to the Word of God. I don't. 
If, if, and when he's on these worldly programs, when he's on these worldly programs, he should just let the word of God be his words. Just speak, just speak straight from the word of God. That's it. That's it. Who cares what kind of questions they're going to ask you? Who cares about all that? Who cares about all their worldly questions they're going to ask you? Just stick to the Word of God. It's just that simple. Because guess what? That's how real revivals happen. Real revivals happen through the Word of God. They happen through the preaching of the Word of God. They happen through repentance. That's how revivals take place. They don't take place at these 